Undercalcified bone histology demonstrates the microarchitecture of bone, showing both the mineralized and cellular components of bone, providing vital information on bone turnover or bone formation and resorption. This has tremendous importance in a variety of clinical and research applications. It provides beautiful images and allows for techniques such as fluorochrome assessment and histomorphometry. Performing undercalcified bone histology is technically challenging, particularly with large size specimens. This video will demonstrate the technical difficulties and methods to overcome these in obtaining undercalcified sections of bone. It will not go into histomorphometric assessment of these sections. For this, we refer you to the following important publication. This video will cover specimen preparation and fixation, processing, embedding, sectioning both ground and cut, slide preparation and staining. Following tissue collection, the specimen, in this case the sheep cervical spine, is placed in a sealed opaque container containing 10% phosphate buffered formalin solution. There should be minimal exposure to light if fluorochrome analysis is to be performed as the fluorochromes are light sensitive. The specimen is then taken to the lab and trimmed to size which improves fixation and ensures that it fits into a block. The orientation of the tissue on the slide needs to be known at this point so that the block can be prepared in the correct plane. Safety is very important and instruments should be used so that hands are kept free from the blade. Their area of interest is now trimmed to size. Final trimming is then performed with a smaller bandsaw which results in less tissue loss. Once a block has been cut to size, it is placed in a sealed opaque container containing fresh formalin to complete fixation. The volume of the container should be approximately 10 times the size of the specimen to achieve adequate fixation. The specimen should remain in the formalin solution for between one and two weeks, depending on its size, after which it is transferred to 70% ethanol. Processing is then performed in a slow manner, as the large size of the blocks and the low permeability of bone makes for slow diffusion of solvents. Dehydration is then carried out using ascending concentrations of ethanol and then clearing in butanol. The specimen is kept shielded from the light and under constant agitation. We recommend approximately one week in each solution. Processing therefore takes about four to six weeks. This should not be rushed as it will compromise the final quality of the sections. There are a variety of embedding options available for undercalcified bone. The choice of resin or methacrylate depends on what is to be tested. For example, immunohistochemistry is not possible with all resins. Epoxy resins require UV light for curing, which would interfere with fluorochrome analysis. We recommend consulting the manufacturer's specifications before making a careful choice. We use Technovit 7100, as this allows for nice cut and ground sections for light microscopy and fluorochrome analysis, and is cost effective. The important consideration with embedding is that the density of the bone and the density of the embedding medium should be closely matched. This is very important when later cutting the blocks, particularly for microtome sectioning. The mixture is prepared according to the manufacturer's instructions and shaken vigorously. It may be worth embedding a few spare samples to optimise the protocol. Unlike with paraffin, this is an irreversible step. The blocks are placed with a cutting surface down into the mould. The mould should be bigger than the block to give support and strength. Methacrylate infiltration should be performed slowly to allow for maximal infiltration of the methacrylate into the bone. Again, exposure of light should be minimised. After one week in infiltration solution, the infiltration solution is changed and the hardening solution is added. A backing plate is then fashioned. We use Technovit 3040 for this. The mould is then peeled away and the block is now ready. Ground sectioning produces larger sections between 20 to 50 microns in thickness. It is useful for fluorochrome analysis as thicker sections produce brighter fluorescence. To produce the ground section, a macrotome is needed, preferably with a diamond blade. We use a 0.6 mm kerf diamond blade. A lubricant is imperative. We prefer a petroleum based lubricant, although silicon based lubricants also work well. The block is then placed in the clamp. It is secured into the macrotome and the block is advanced towards the blade. The first section exposes the cutting face and orientates the section. It should be discarded. Grinding is a slow process and should not be rushed. Adequate lubrication should be ensured. When the section is ground, it is then placed on a slide. 
It may be cleaned and polished as required. The section has a tendency to curl, so we recommend placing a portion of a sandwich bag over it and holding it flat with another slide clamped into place. It is then placed into an incubator of between 60 to 80 degrees Celsius for one hour. This softens the methacrylate and helps the section adhere to the slide in a flat manner. Here we see a composite fluorescent image of three different fluorochromes, injected at monthly intervals. This enables identification of the site of mineralization at a distinct time point. The doses and preparation of these labels can be found in the text. The microtome provides thin sections, which is best for light microscopy. It is a technically challenging process. We suggest using a sledge microtome for the added strength it provides for cutting these hard blocks. A variety of blades can be used, including tungsten carbide blades. However, we recommend a stainless steel blade as this can be resharpened easily and frequently as required. The blade should be orientated to make a 45 degree angle with the block. The methacrylate density is susceptible to many factors including the ambient humidity in the room. The block should therefore be stored in a desiccator. Surface softening can be achieved by applying a wet paper to the block if required. It may take several sections to achieve the right cutting conditions to obtain a quality section. Again, the sandwich bag and additional slide are clamped to flatten the section before it is placed in the incubator. Staining is similar to standard paraffin embedded histology, except that de-waxing is obviously not required. The common stains used for bone include Von Cossa with saffron counterstain, saffron o light green, and Masson Goldner's trichrome. The protocol for these are referred to in the text. The reagents are selected and filtered prior to use. Goldner stain is frequently used for histomorphometry. We recommend optimizing the stains on test slides first. After each step, the slide can be viewed under a microscope to ensure the correct colorings. This enables achieving the correct times for each component stain. Once the stain is optimized, all the slides from the experiment are stained simultaneously in a rack with the same protocol to avoid staining variability affecting histomorphometry. The slides are then cover slipped in a standard manner. We wish you luck with your experiment.